Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to an overview of a game that I made in 48 hours for the Ludum Dare Game Jam. Uh, this is not going to be a tutorial breakdown of everything that happened in this particular game, uh, but we'll give you an overview, and if you check the description box down below, you can find a link to uh, the website where you can play this game, and also where you can download the full source code for this game if you want to explore it. So, this game was, uh, well, unfortunately at the last minute I decided to call it Shoot. Uh, but I much prefer the original title of AAA FPS Game of the Year Edition. And this game, so this was created in 48 hours with Let Em Dare, which is a game programming competition. Uh, you have 48 hours from the announcement of the theme, so you don't know what the theme is going to be until the very minute the competition starts, and this time around the theme was minimalism. So I, there were actually two failed starts that I went through uh, before I settled on this idea. So in practice, I had about mm, 25 hours to make this game, plus, you know, meals, breaks, uh, which are important, and also sleeping through the night. So in practice, I probably made this game in about 16 hours of actual coding. And what it is, it is a first-person shooter multiplayer game and I don't think I don't know if there were any other games in the competition that were actually multiplayer based uh, or successfully so rather and this was so it's very easy it's cloud-based server hosting you can play you can connect and you are teamed up with well up to I suppose 15 other people and you get to blow them apart so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by giving you a quick little demo of the gameplay and I'll probably just drop into single-player mode just to uh, keep things simple here but uh, so it starts off shoot it asks you for your username I'm gonna click the offline versus bots button uh, we also have an option screen obviously this is the built-in unity GUI stuff which means it's not terribly pretty uh, but it's gonna work fine I mean I can even change my graphic quality on the fly which is pretty cool sound levels mouse sensitivity all kinds of things so we're gonna return to the game I'm gonna click offline versus bots so it's going to create an offline game for me. And then what we have is, oop, let me run away from this guy. We have a first person shooter. It's very simplified. The game theme was minimalism. So my idea was to break things down to the absolute minimal requirements for a fun per first person shooter. And to me that meant multiplayer, that meant bots for offline mode. Also because I knew that there wouldn't always be 16 people online simultaneously. So I needed to fill the extra slots with, with bots who could chase you down and, and hunt you down. Now, uh, the bots actually do far less damage than the players do. It was uh, one of the things I've learned quite early on in game development is you uh, tune the difficulty. This, I think, actually is based on a quote from someone from ID Software. Uh, when you're making a game, tune the difficulty to a point where you find it like so easy you could beat it with your eyes closed and call that mode hard. Um, because obviously there's at release anyway, there's no one that's going to be better at you at the game um, than uh, yeah than the uh, than you right you're gonna have more experience and all that now it turns out I'm not terribly good at first person shooters so that's not entirely true uh, but I still felt like especially in the versus bots we got to make sure that they're as easy as heck so they don't actually do much damage but other than that they will uh, they will roam around the level they will chase you down if they find you. And then when they get to within five meters, they will stop and try to blow you up. So those were two of the minimalist aspects that were needed. And I also felt like power-ups even, you know, theoretically, it would have been more minimalist without the power-ups. But I felt like it was pretty important to have it in there because the power-ups give you something to look for as opposed to another enemy. And they give you some amount of uh, map control. Uh, for example, this is the super armor over here, which only respawns every minute minute and a half I'm not sure what the timing is most power-ups respawn every 20 seconds but that thing respawns somewhat longer I'm gonna say 60 to 90 seconds somewhere in there I can't remember what the setup was because this was actually quite a few weeks ago um, so that gives you something to do there's also and I actually highly regret not having more than one landmark like this um, because I'm trying to remember I think I'm actually on the wrong side of the map oh no here it is oh I'm gonna die before I get to it uh, you can see it over on the left hand side that little C shape area there's a super health pot over there it'll actually bring you all the way up to 200 percent health potentially um so you know there's a little bit of aspect there so the bots aren't, aren't brilliant and it wouldn't actually take very long to make them a little bit more sophisticated more than anything i don't like the fact that they kind of just stop like you know they walk towards the people and originally they literally got right up into your face and then i've gotten them stop when they're at five meters but i think that in hindsight what i would have liked them to do is sort of pick a random spot five to ten meters away from the target and walk towards there 
and then when you sort of reach there, pick a new spot. So that way the bots are always sort of like trying to move around you and wiggle around and generally be a little bit more interesting to look at. It doesn't make much of a huge difference in terms of gameplay, uh, although I guess they'd be slightly harder to hit. But it would, it would just look better than them standing around. But, you know, we were on a pretty tight time limit. Um, so minimalism. So I like, I like the level aesthetic. I thought it worked out pretty well. Obviously, if you've seen my first-person shooter tutorial, you'll get a distinct... Like, it'll feel familiar in, in terms of the aesthetics. And that was the thing. When this came up, uh, I looked at that first-person shooter tutorial that I made and said, I, I really love the way this looks. There's something kind of Portal-esque about it, and I wanted to bring that back. So I did have to start everything from scratch, more or less, um, other than, you know, some built-in libraries and things like that. Like, publicly accessible source was fine. Anything that other people could reasonably use for their project themselves, uh, you could use. But other than that, everything had to be created from scratch, and certainly the art assets, so I had to make my little Lego people in Blender and so on and so forth. Uh, the game did quite well. This was the biggest let em there to date. It had uh, roughly 2,400 entries. And for humor, I came in the top uh, 1%. Uh, for fun, I came in the top 2%. And fun is by far the, the primary uh, metric by which I measure my games. You know, some people really look for something innovative or something that like hardcore emphasizes the theme. Like the thing that won for the their theme, because this was minimalism, wasn't truly a game in a sense. Um, they literally just created their game was called Three Minus Two, and in the game you could create or in your entry, when you submit your entry to the game, you can submit up to five screenshots. And the screenshots were literally labeled one, two, three, four, and five. And one, two, or sorry, one, three, four, and five, when you clicked on the link, would bring you to an image that say false. And the, the link that says two would bring you to an image that said true, right? It was three minus two, so two was the answer. And that was li literally it. There was no game. There were only screenshots. And that won for, for minimalism. And you know what? Sure, good on them. Uh, and you know, there are certainly some very oddball games out there for, that win for innovation. But mostly I aim for fun, so I'm really, really happy. And usually I, can, I always say, oh, my goal is the top 50%. But in my head, I'm actually like, well, I hope I come in the top 25%. And the fact that I came in the top 1%, 2%, and my overall score was actually, uh, I think, 3.4% at the top. I was extremely happy for that. In fact, I broke the uh, the top 100 chart, which was the first time doing that, by far my best score, and I was super happy. And of course, the whole thing was live streamed. So if you want, really want to see the creation process, you can go over to twitch.tv slash quill18 and go into the video archives and you should be able to find the videos there. It's possible not all of them will be there, but of course there will also be lots and lots of video to look at um, because this was a long process. And it's not like I'm making a tutorial out of it. You know, I'm not describing every single thing I do. But uh, if you do check the link down below, you can download this project and sort of poke around in there. Um, just because the source is available, available doesn't mean it's literally open source. So you can't like put a logo on this and sell it or something. But you know, it's not it's not actually high quality, high enough quality for it to be a commercial. Oh, there we go. Super health, mega health. The voices were very fun to make. Um, yeah. I don't know. So anyway, I figured that was it. If you have any questions about the game, please don't hesitate to ask them down below. The multiplayer server is handled by the Photon Unity Cloud. Uh, they do have a free setup uh, that you can have up to 20 concurrent users connected. And uh, so it's a great way to sort of test and develop your multiplayer game. In fact, if you're willing to run your own server, uh, you can download their software and then you can run up to 100 users concurrently. But if you have them host it, there's literally no work for you to do. You can just um, set it up and then you can have up to 20 users. And even when you get up to high, high numbers, like I think if you're an indie developer, which means you're, you're below a certain revenue threshold, I think you can have a server that can have up to a thousand players simultaneously. Not necessarily in the same literal game. Like you might want to have a cap of 32 people in a single game session, but a thousand people can be connected simultaneously to your server. I think it's still, it's still under $100 to do that hundred dollars per month which is which is pretty damn good um and you know a thousand concurrent users means i don't know how many actual you know sort of subscribe people to your game so there's there's definitely some some profit options there which are kind of interesting and, and tantalizing um yeah so that's it photon unity cloud you can find all the references to it in the link the download link down below so definitely 
check that out. And if you want, and again, I can uh, I can disconnect and I can click multiplayer. And there probably won't be anyone online right now. Yeah, there isn't. But, you know, see if you can get a couple of your friends to connect at the same time. It's automatic matchmaking. It will automatically put you in the same room together. And then you can blow each other to bits in very cute ways. And make sure to listen to the audio when you play the game because I think it's adorable. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.